We have not brought Excadrill a single time with this team. Will it be able to show or will one of the most common Pokemon in this format that's on this team, you know, just drop? Hey everyone, James back here. Welcome back to another episode of VGC 2020 Back to Battles. Today is the final episode with this pledge team using Savali, Inteleon, the Snorlax, Arcanine, Togekiss, and Excadrill that we have never brought. If you haven't seen the last episode, highly recommend go checking out. But let's get started and play some games with today's common question going to be what do you think about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX? In the last episode, I asked everyone if they played the demo, but let me know in the comments down below what you thought or what you think about Pokemon uh, Mystery Dungeon DX. I don't know why I'm slipping. I but let me know because I'm really excited Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Blue was actually one of my first games that I ever owned alongside Mario Kart for the Nintendo DS when I first got my first system my first video game console slash system ever uh, so I'm really happy to play that although I'm gonna be uh, real here I'm actually not really a big fan of like how the 3D Pokemon games uh, the Mystery Dungeon games have been like for gameplay wise I don't know I've just never been a fan of it I like the 2D version more, but let's talk about that later. We got an Indidi, Mimikyu, a Hawlucha, Snorlax, the Gastrodon, and the Arcanine. So this is a very scary team because there's that Trick Room option as well as that Pledge option. So this is going to be very scary. So what do I want to go here? I think I want to go Togekiss plus the Snorlax. Uh, with Arcanine in the back, I think. I don't think I could go Pledge here, which is the sad part. I don't think I can. Uh, do I want to go? I could go Excadrill here. Like, it's actually viable. Or I could go Savali. You know what? We'll bring Excadrill. We're finally going to bring Excadrill, I think, to this game. And the reason I'm bringing Excadrill is because I could break the Mimikyu's disguise. Well, I could just Iron Head through it without worrying about disguise. Like, that's the main point. It also does well against the Arcanine, potentially. So we'll see how this goes here. I'm not exactly too sure. This matchup looks super strange to me. And I'm not sure what the matchup is like. We're going to see Mimikyu Arcanine lead. Okay. Against my Snorlax Togekiss, I can Belly Drum up and follow me, which is pretty optimal, I think, for me here. Is that not Tim? Wait, was that not Intimidate Arcanine? Oh, don't tell me this is beat up. No, this is... Oh, no, this is beat up. This is beat up. No! Oh no. Oh wait, if it's beat up, I just follow me anyway. <laughs> well, why was I so worried? No, I just, yeah. <laughs> That's actually so funny. Um, okay. That could have been scary. <laughs> I was like, no, this is beat up Mimikyu. It gets beat up. And Mimikyu's faster than Arcanine by one point. That's actually kind of clever, because I almost forgot that Mimikyu gets beat up uh, now. Because uh, beat up wasn't a move tutor or anything last uh, last time. We're going to see the switch out into NDD, which is an interesting switch. And we will see what my opponent decides to go for with the Arcanine. So, completely okay with this. We will go for the Belly Drum here. And Arcanine actually going to hard switch too. Is that the Snorlax? Yeah, that's the Snorlax, so I'm completely okay with this uh, situation here. Because what I'll do, follow me is going to come out. I'm going to double that Snorlax slot for sure. I am max speed Snorlax, so I'm going to probably have the speed advantage. Unless my opponents also like max speed Snorlax as well. Um, so, okay. We'll get the belly drum up. Uh, we have a pretty good advantage against our opponent immediately. Uh, we can go for the Dazzling Gleam right here to break any sashes. And we will go for the... Uh, I just Darkest Lariat. I kind of want a Darkest Lariat. Because do I have a reason to G-Max yet? I don't. Like, the bulk doesn't matter if my opponent's not attacking. I might as well just not use it. Because, yeah, you're going to follow me here, which is fine. Like, that's what I would anticipate right here. Uh, we're going to get the Dazzling Gleam off into my opponent. You know, bring that Snorlax a little bit of extra chip. Looks like we are at least speed time with the Snorlax. We will be able to outspeed and knock out the NDD. So nice. Goodbye, NDD, and the Snorlax is going to Belly Drum as well. 
I wonder if it survives Max G replenish after taking the Dazzling Gleam chip. So this is going to be very, very interesting of how this next uh, few turns is going to play out. So going to heal with its berry, the uh, uh, Figgy Berry, so it's not Fig Fat. Okay. Uh, Mimikyu, I'm assuming, comes out here. I don't think Arcanine's a good play at all because it doesn't do anything here. Um... Now, Mimikyu is the one I'm really interested about, because I don't know if it's, like, beat up Psyka, maybe it's beat up Trick Room. Like, it gets a few options, and I don't know what exactly. Like, who knows? The Justified Arcanine could just literally be a bait to think that the Mimikyu has a beat up, and then it reveals it's Psyka, which is exactly why I don't want to go for it. So I'm going to follow me here, and I'm going to actually go for the G-Max Replenish now, because I might as well, because I think my opponent's also going to attempt it as well. But let's see what my opponent does. Yeah, and it's stronger than the double edge, so I might as well go for it. I also get the chance to bring back a berry, which is helpful, of course. So let's see. Of course, it might have been better just to get the Excadrill in for the max steel spike, but I think that G Max Replenish Snorlax is the way I want to win this game. So let's see. I could have also Dazzle and Gleam Max Darkness to Mimikyu, but I don't know if Snorlax has Protect or not. We are going to see a Dynamax come out from my opponent. Let's see, because it's really going to come down to can we survive these attacks, because I'm not sure. So long as it's just such a bulky Pokemon. Um, so I'm not sure if we KO it here. It is pretty low. It is pretty low. It's like what? It would be like one... It would be like 130% naturally, I think. No, 150%. This is like at 75 right now. GMAX Replenish into the Snorlax. Let's see if it KOs. Boom! Alright, that's game. Ooh, we even found a citrus berry. Too bad we won't be snacking on it now. And Mimikyu looked like it went for a trick room this turn. Yep, that's game. Uh, because now I can just target down to Arcanine. No big deal. I could follow me. There really isn't much my opponent can do. There's not really a shenanigan that really gets my opponent outside of the situation. But yeah, very nice. Very nice. Arcanine gonna come out. It doesn't even have Intimidate, so can't even slow down my uh, Snorlax. Not like it could anyway, because the Intimidate wouldn't slow down my Snorlax from picking up these knockouts. It's gonna pick up these knockouts. I'm always gonna follow me here. I'm not risking beat up or anything. That was gonna be forfeited. My opponent realizing, hey, there's really no chance of me winning this game. And we're able to pick up a very quick win for today's episode. So... Well, let's continue on and play some games, but yeah, we were able to get Snorlax in a really good position. Uh, Trigger wasn't set up immediately. Uh, my opponent couldn't really do like beat up strategy since I led the Togekiss and the Snorlax mode, and yeah. You know what? Excadrill was still useless because it never came out. <laughs> it could have won in the end game though, potentially. There's a next opponent in the top 1000s. Oh, this team. I hate dealing with this team. The Vanilla strategy with the Inteleon, the. Sand Mode, Snorlax, and Togekiss. Oh, this is very scary. I kind of like how this team functions, though. This kind of looks pretty cool. Why is there Hell and Sand, though, is the question, I guess. Um, want to go and Talion plus a Vala. I do want to get the Pledge off, I think, immediately. Want to get the Arcanine in the back, and I think. And I want to go my Snorlax. Um, the problem is I don't have much... Okay. So I don't have much to deal with this combination, especially like Aurora Veil stuff. This is going to be a very tough game. Aurora Veil, the Follow Me with Togekiss, with the Snorlax. There's just so many options my opponent has. It could even be weakness policy on the Togekiss and like Ice Shard stuff from Vanellix or the Inteleon. So this is a very scary team. And yeah, like that's why I like my opponent's team. Like there are so many scary potential options that my opponent could have. And they kind of work together. So let's see how this goes. Although my opponent has like four fighting weaknesses, which is not really good. Uh, we're gonna see what Tyranitar. No, that's not Tyranitar. That's Vanellux plus D and Talion. Okay. Snow warning gonna activate. So there we go, which is fine. I'm gonna target the Vanellux down. Aurora Veil is gonna be set up this game, which is really frustrating, but not much I can do here. Let's see what my opponent really does here. Um. 
I'm guessing it's going to be Togekiss plus Snorlax in the back, but I'm not 100% certain because Tyranitar is really good against my team as well. I'd say it's weakest policy on Togekiss, but I can't say 100%. Let's see. A Dynamax comes out, which is not what I anticipated. Is that the Inteleon? I thought Snorlax or anything else would be that. Yeah, it's the Inteleon coming out. Okay, interesting. Uh, okay. I don't know what you're going for. You can't knock me out. You're not going for Geyser because that would get rid of your hail. I win a speed type potentially. Well, I am Max B and Talion, so I have no clue. Uh, we get the Grass Pledge off. It's going to target down the Vanellux because I do want to chip that Vanellux away. Uh, pretty good damage overall. I was not expecting the Inteleon to go for that. Airstream going to come out, which is fine, into my own Inteleon. Brings me down to my Focus Sash, but not too big of a deal, I think. Uh, Aurora Veil is probably going to be set up, but I think that's fine. My Snorlax can put in work now. Like, against these special attackers? Yeah. It's Life Orb Inteleon, too. Okay. This goes for Blizzard, actually. Not even Aurora Veil. Okay. Really? Oh, no. If, if that was anything else, I wouldn't... If that was... Okay. Blizzard was fine. A freeze, really? Uh, do I go Arc? No, I, I have to go Snorlax. I have to set up now. Like this is the best time to set up. Why did it have to freeze me? Cause I would, I would have got. To, oh my lord. Why? Why? <laughs> I could get a parting shot off, or I could have knocked out the Vanellix. Well, let's see if I unfall for it. <sighs> Belly drum up. Aurora Veil's coming out the next this turn. Unless you're blizzarding again, which is fine. I can't believe that actually happened. Turn one, Blizzard. Axe Darkness into Savali. No, and the Stone Axe. Did you crit me too? That did so much. Oh no, I don't. No, that was a crit. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. I'm thick fat Snorlax. Even if that didn't crit, I live that. <laughs> you got the 10% freeze into a 4% crit when I was in an okay spot regardless because okay Savali sure it sucked it got frozen but like Stonex was living that blizzard even after max darkness then the crit happened this is the shortest episode of VGC back to McVal is over because of two dumb chances that happened two turns in a row you've got to be kidding me I'm gonna find out if Wall Charge knocks out Inteleon. I'm getting my revenge. I'm not making this a 4 0. Never mind. Well, you're fainting to life orb and hail, technically. Uh, well, that's not even gonna happen. <sighs> you hate to see it. <laughs> you hate to see it. <laughs> Oh, that just reminds me of how, like, Pokemon go sometimes, like... Yeah. Like, I'm not even mad. It's more funny than mad. At least it happened, like, when I'm not at a tournament, because I feel like if this happened at a tournament, I would be fuming right now. I would be so mad right now. But it's online. Not too much. Uh, because, as you can tell, I would have been in a pretty good spot regardless, because, like, if there was no crit... Or if there was no freeze, which also helped, I would have knocked out the Vanellix, get the grassy, grass play job, knock out the Vanellix, belly drum, been pretty healthy. What about spend all my opponent's Pokemon? Dynamax, go for the G-Max Replenish. Probably, even if I don't get my berry back, it's fine, because I've knocked out a Pokemon, and I'd probably live another hit anyway. But because of the freeze and the crit, it gave me no opportunities for outs. You gotta love it. Ah... That's Pokemon sometimes. That is Pokemon sometimes. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode of VGC 2020 Back to Battles though. If you did enjoy, please leave a like down below. Show support as well as you can leave a comment down below and share this video with your friends. Show them what Pokemon can be sometimes. 
why it can be one of the most frustrating games ever. But uh, you can check out my social medias down below. Uh, the placement of the team is down below in the description. If you do want to go try it out, if you want to support me on my other platforms and go an extra mile, there is my Twitch channel and, it's my, and my Patreon page. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on those platforms. Thank you to everyone who's been supporting me on YouTube. You and everyone else who makes this channel are amazing. But otherwise, that's pretty much it. Have a great day, people. Until we bow again, I'll catch y'all later.